Hello there guys, Anya Overton here with Smells Like Crayons. So we had a request for paint. This is our Hungry Hungry Caterpillar done in all rainbow colors. He's fun, he's 3D, it's gonna have your name on him. Isn't he cute? All right, so this is what we're doing with paint today. So you wanna get out flat paint brushes, whatever you have that's um, flat, and you'll need a pencil, an eraser, and then two paper towels. And then also your paint, of course, and a cup of water. Okay, so I failed to mention that we will actually need paper <laughs> and some scissors. So, but I bet your teachers are already on that and they have passed out this nice, large, thick paper for you. So the first thing you want to do is fold it in half long ways. And just make sure you line up the edges all nice. If you don't, then your, um, you know, your paper will be crooked. Okay, so we have it folded in half like that. Um, the next thing you want to do is start down here and kind of draw a swoop down to the bottom, Whoop, just like that. It doesn't really matter where your swoop is. And then we're going to draw two little leaves sticking up. They just kind of... I mean, I always say that they look like lemons, but however you want to draw little leaves and your swoop. So if you're curious, you know, wondering how much sky and how much bottom um, you have for your swoop, mine happens to be three and a half inches um, up from the bottom. And then I just curve down and, and up a little bit. And then that'll give us room to put this caterpillar back there. So um, next, you open up your paper and you cut here and stop and all the way around here and stop and here and stop. So we'll be erasing these lines and you just cut out, my dog ate my eraser. <laughs> uh, anyway, so you cut all along in those lines. So now that you've cut this off, go ahead and save that because we're gonna be cutting, um, we're just gonna be using it throughout to cut the eyeballs and the little tongue and things like that. So save that paper. And then this is how this will be. Go ahead and erase your lines. Um, if you'll notice, I'm taking the eraser and I'm pushing up towards the really delicate tip of the leaf. If I were to pull down this way, it'll it would probably like crunch my leaf. So just start at the base, push out to get all those eraser lines gone. And next we're gonna write our names in all capitals. So the first one on the example I did, um, I did Alexander. I don't know if there's any Alexanders in the class, but yeah, so on this one, I'm actually gonna do my name just to show that a short name or a long name will fit. So sometimes when I'm doing names, like Anya has four letters in it, that's my name. So sometimes I'll just kind of like block out four sections and I'll know that my name is gonna go A-N-Y-A. So I know that that'll fit there. And so if that helps you, go ahead and do that. Um, what we kind of want to do is keep that same swoop. So you're not actually drawing now. I'm just showing you that, that you want to follow that swoop line. So my A is going to be pretty little. Um, my N is going to be bigger. So I have inside these blocks to write my name. So just really lightly, I'm writing an A and then an N. And if you want to make it kind of curly or fun, that's fine. Be, I don't know, maybe I'll go straight down with that. Maybe not too curly because we're going to make block letters. So, so you have your name written like that. And if you've seen stickers before, obviously everyone's seen stickers, but see how like, see how the outline follows along pretty evenly. That's what we want to do with this to make our block letters. So now we just pretend that we know what we're doing, huh? So we just, 
like the point of the A, I'm actually not going to make that pointy. I'm going to make that straight. So I'm going to make that straight. And just like a sticker, I'm going to follow along and then go straight at the bottom. So can you see that like the space between here is about even all the way up? I'm going to do a tiny little triangle in here because it looks cool when they're small. And then down like that. So it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just doing our name. <laughs> However you want to have your name end up, then it is what it is. So wherever there's a point, I make it nice and big and flat. Or see how there's just a dot here? I'll make it nice and big and flat. Flat, flat, flat. And keep all those flat things about the same size. And then just like the sticker, you think, well, how far is it from here to there? And I just kind of try and follow your line and then go down. And I'm drawing pretty dark, but we will be erasing these later. So you'll want to draw lighter if you can. And then tiny little triangle in the middle, short. So that's what we do to end up with. And it's okay, see how there I didn't have room? It's okay to have it go behind the A, however. Okay, so there's my name. And then we're going to erase the center section. So another thing we wanna do is where this caterpillar took a little munch out of our kind of bigger leaf here, is um, if you wanna draw like a little mark like a mouth mark and then draw little cloud like teeth buttons around it and then cut that out so that's going to be probably the hardest part of cutting anything out is these fun little teeth marks so while we're here and at this stage i am going to switch things up go ahead and grab your markers really quick and grab that dark green marker out and then that scrap of paper that you saved um, put it behind here and then you know just as best you can draw your leaf Whoop. and then that way you're not drawing on your desk and there's our leaves so they kind of look like lemons I start from the very center section and try and do whoop, whoop, like that and then um, yeah Go ahead and trace your name. Next, we want to get rid of all the pencil on here completely. So I'm erasing in between my fingers. So I hold it tight and erase whatever I see. That's pencil. And next we want to take out your oil pastels and get the light green out of there. Light green, not the dark green, light green. All right, so now with the light green, we fill in the base of the leaf. And just kind of don't fill it in all the way. Just gonna blend it out, blend it up, go along the edges maybe, but then call that good. And then we fill in every bit of your name and it doesn't matter if it goes over the green a little bit, but you just don't want it to go into the white. Now we'll want to get out your paint. And what we're gonna be starting with is the light blue and the dark blue. So the dark blue is gonna go really far. We don't need a whole lot and um, First of all, you want to keep all your paint at the top of your desk because if you have it down around your elbows, it could fall. I've had this happen. So you just tap a teensy bit out, like toothpaste size. You really don't need much at all. And then the light blue. Woo! Light blue poured out like crazy fast. So this is where your paper towel comes in, this little one and get your brush. I turn my page 
sideways. I'm gonna actually then take this paper towel and put it on my desk. Doo -doo -doo. So, and grab your brush. I think of what brush is most like you guys. It's probably this size. I prefer a little bit bigger. If you have these brushes, that would be easier. Um, but yes, I need the littler one. So this is not actually watercolor paper. It's not gonna hold up too well. This can be way better than construction paper. So I have my extra paper towel covering my desk. And if you'll notice, sky is lighter at the horizon. We're pretending that down here is the horizon. Is that even on the video? Let's see. Cool. So the lighter color is gonna go at the bottom, but we're gonna start with the darker color. So I get my brush wet. And then I always have this paper towel handy so I can either dip off excess water or dip off extra paint, whatever. So um, I would almost get your paper wet first, just kind of go across a little bit. Not all the way down because it's gonna dry like instantly. So get that dark blue color and just do nice long strokes. I mean, I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna clean up my desk at the end. <laughs> I don't know what you guys want to do. So just nice, long, even strokes. We're trying to do long strokes. And if you'll see in the middle, it's kind of like dry there and it didn't blend like I wanted it to. Dip it in the water and then just keep, keep going with those even strokes. The more you work it, the more the paper is likely to pill up and to shred and just get destroyed and you'll put a hole in your paper. So just be careful not to do it too much, I guess. So now this next layer, I have a little bit of paint on my brush, which is great. And I'm getting some water on there and I'll do blue down here because somewhere in there, we want to blend this light blue color in. Do, 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 do. So just nice long strokes and blend it up with this, this one. Cool. And you can go this way too. That's easier. And there's our pretty blues blending together. And then where are we at here, guys? I would say that's like maybe halfway. So now we're gonna try and think about how to get this blue to blend into basically white. So now we're kind of using less paint and we're just gonna use the white of the paper. Whatever looks pretty to you. I checked and I did actually want the blue to shine through here, so I decided not to do it white white at the bottom, just light blue. So that's what it's gonna look like. So what we're going to do is fold your paper in half long ways, and we actually want to fold it in thirds as well. So, Thirds are a little bit tricky. It's kind of a guessing game. If you guys want to measure, I can give you the measurements. I always found it difficult to stuff envelopes when I was a kid. So you just kind of push them together. So you don't want to do it in half. You just push it, you guess where three is, and then you push it on this side. And if it's too far, you move it. Anyway, this is kind of important because it's going to be the shape of your caterpillar. So we really want to get that third mark and don't crease it down until you feel like the inside is touching the inside there and the outside's gonna be touching. I think that's pretty darn good. We're gonna call that thirds. Okay, so when you open up your paper, it should look like that. If you're curious as to uh, where to fold the third mark in, um, it looks like this is four inches. So they're all four inches across. I don't know if that helps. Um, 
so you know where to fold it. Anyway, go ahead and get out one of your permanent markers and we are going to draw our lines so we can tell where there are when we're painting them. Doesn't matter if they're pretty because this is all gonna get cut off anyway. It's just a marker, haha, <laughs> marker for, um, yeah, for, our, for where we're going with this. So on your palette, you should already have your blue and whatnot, but we're actually gonna start with warm colors. It's probably a good idea to shake them. Make sure the lid is on when you're um, shaking them. And quite messy. <laughs> I think I already, I think I pre-opened these, but they probably have like that thing to peel up. So that's another great thing that on your side paper, when you're peeling that stuff off, just set it on here, stick them all together and then go throw it away. Cause your hands are going to get it. Your paper's going to get in it. So maybe have them pre-opened. It's a great idea. So, okay, so we're gonna create a super fun rainbow here. We should have clean brushes and clean water to work with. So red and blue, red is a warm color, blue is a cool color. If you mix them, then it's gonna get your water all muddy. So you wanna start with clean water because we're doing warm colors first. So you want to, I mean, I'm probably just gonna use the lid um, so create and maybe we'll use this paper in the background or this guy. Boop. There we go. So I want my reddest color on the left here and then we're going to kind of fade into what will be orange. So we're going to have lots of thick red here on the left. If you, if you want to put a little red on your palette, you can. Um, I just don't feel like it is necessary because we just don't need a lot of red and we're gonna be done with it. So I'm getting more water because it's starting to get dry lines. And we're just, mostly this is the red orange square. Okay, so now we shake our orange Get a teensy bit of orange on here, just like, not much, it doesn't take much. And I still have red on my brush, I didn't bother rinsing it out. I'm gonna get a little more red from here and we're just gonna do red and orange. So we have them kind of blended between the two. So our next square is gonna be the orange square and then the yellow. So I don't have a lot of orange left on here. Um, I'm ready to put more on there, but I'm gonna close up my red cap. because we just don't want any spills and we're all done with the red. So we'll pour a teensy bit of orange on there. It comes out really fast, guys, so be careful. So the purest color of orange is going to be right here on this line and halfway into your square. This should be all orange. And then we're going to fade it into orangish yellow. So orange is a secondary color. Red's a primary, orange is secondary, and ter tertiary your sherry try that is the orangish yellow so we'll get a little yellow out I didn't bother rinsing out my brush it just kind of naturally mixes on the paper but now that I see how strong the orange is and it's kind of overwhelming my yellow I'm gonna rinse and then I'm gonna dab on my uh, paper here and I'm going to get as much pure yellow as I can starting over here and we're just going to do pure pure yellow and this yellow is actually going to blend into green so this better be all yellow with no orange in it 
And then this is where the orange blends with the yellow. This corner dried, I'm gonna add a little bit of orange. Do, 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 do. Okay, so we have orange, orange, yellow, blending into rinsing again, because the yellow is so sensitive. Any tiny tint of color is gonna make our yellow disappear. So we have straight yellow now. Um, we're gonna have to use a lot of yellow, so I would just color your whole square yellow. Don't worry about stopping halfway or trying to blend or whatever, because the yellow is just really light. Color that whole square. And then we are done with our warm colors. So if you find a, um, this isn't the scratch paper, but if you find an edge of your scratch paper that's clean, go ahead and trace your thumb. And then this is actually gonna be the tongue of the caterpillar, but you want it to be skinny at one end and then kind of bigger at the other. So like that, or if you want a little bit smaller of a tongue, and then um, we'll go ahead and paint that red while we have our paints out and we'll cut it out in a bit when it's dry. Now our water needs to be rinsed. This is a good time to get rid of this warm color water because we're gonna switch into cool colors and we don't want muddy, cool colors. Okay, so now we're moving on to our cool colors. Um, and so if you were to say which one of these two blues looks the most like purple, what would you say? looks the most like purple. So I would say this one. So we're ultimately gonna put that one there, this one here, green, purple, and then pink. So that's the order we're gonna go in on the back. So pink's a warm color, but it kind of goes full circle with the red. So these two together make a really pretty turquoise. So your main line right here is gonna be just this pure green. All right, so we have our pretty sky blue right here. And we're gonna blend that into our darker blue. A little rinse, get a little bit dark blue. So the blues are kind of sharing one They're sharing a square. They don't really get their own. This is just the blue square. There we go. There's our dark blue, sky blue, turquoise, and green. They look really great together. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna blend a little bit of pink and purple on this last one. So there's our purple right over the blue. Nice and strong, looking good. Thank you, I had a helper bee change my water for me because we have um, purple going into pink. That's a cool color going into a warm color. So you want fresh, fresh water to get your brush really clean. And then the last one will be pink. If the paint goes on too runny, your brush probably was holding too much water. So just make sure you um, dip it out, dip the water out. And then if it's still a little bit too runny, then you can let it dry and do a second coat or just put it on kind of thicker. There we go. This is looking really good. And put it on thick there. I feel like there's a stark line here between the purple and the pink. And I feel like this could be more purple. So I'm gonna add more purple here. Yeah. And then have it blend into the pink a little bit better. Hopefully, hopefully we'll get the two to blend. Maybe a little more dark blue. Blending those just so it's like a smooth transition. Maybe just a teensy bit more purple here. 
there. It's looking a little more blended. Well, you can play with it. So we're gonna set this aside to dry and then hopefully these ones will be ready. Um, my water's a little bit too blue because we're gonna paint the background yellow. And so I'm gonna rinse out water. So I'm gonna add a little more yellow to here. Toothpaste size, not much. And open this up because we don't. if we paint on here, it'll get on our blue. I'm gonna put a sheet of paper underneath of it. <clears throat> so, your marker, the green marker, is actually gonna do some bleeding, but the um, crayon won't. So, we'll just paint this whole thing yellow. Do, do, do. And notice I'm avoiding the green part and see how it started to smear right there. That's okay if it smears a little bit, but, but for now we're just trying to get it mostly yellow. And then if it's starting to smear, then that's okay. And at this point, now that we have so much yellow on there, now we can kind of let it smear. We almost, we almost want it to smear at this point. I'm gonna smear it up. So now it's like this greenish yellow. Kind of purposely smearing it. So it's this green yellow. Kind of work it in. So that looks cool. And where the shadow is, I'm gonna add a little bit more green here. Like where the leaf might be in the top edge. Just cause it looks neat. And then, um, so that the this shows up well, I'm gonna add some green here and some green here. And then I leave this just plain yellow on the bottom. There we go. And then I kinda check it and say, yeah, that looks cool. So once again, go ahead and set these aside to dry. And we're gonna check these now, our color squares. So now we'll take your scissors and cut along the black lines. So we put them all together so that they're all facing the same way. If you can see um, one, if, if one is like this, see how it sticks out? We want them all long ways because we're gonna make some ovals. So they're all together and nothing is sticking out. They're all the same size. So um, we'll take just one and turn it over and we're basically going to try and draw a squished circle. So like a really big O. So on the edge, um, there's very little room. We're kind of cutting off the corners, cutting off the corners. And then at this point, if I were to cut this out right now, this would be a flat edge and a flat edge, and we don't really want that. So now that I have a general shape, I'm gonna try and make it a little so that there's no flat edges. Doesn't have to be perfect. I would say that looks pretty good. Yeah. So you stack them together make sure that they're all the same size and if you can cut them all at once that is great um, I'm squeezing pretty hard with my fingers here if I didn't then the stack would start to slip as the scissors go through so you squeeze really hard and then just turn squeezing hard cutting and turning as you go and then I haven't let go of anything yet. I'm squeezing with this hand to turn it. So you just never let go and just keep making a nice oval here and just kind of guess. <clears throat> and so say if you think, oh, well, that's a weird looking oval, you keep them together and then just, just try and, there, 
Now we have our caterpillar circles. Yay! So with this um, sheet of paper that we've been using, go ahead and trace this for the eyeballs. So you hold, obviously make sure it's shut. <laughs> hold it down and then I'm tilting the pencil pretty good if, if so you can hear it as it as it touches so that made a perfect circle so if I didn't tilt the pencil it just it's big it's weird it didn't quite connect you actually want to hear the pencil go on that I don't know if you can hear that you can hear it takes like I do part of it and then come over and part of it and then come over and part of it and then the other part so it's almost like four different so anyway, you hold that, ta -da, and then there's your circle on the inside. It's all perfect. If you want to do the same thing with the circles too, if you only want to draw one. And here's what we're looking for. Is it plain white on the back? Or did you accidentally get paint on there? So as long as it's plain white, um, we should be good. So here, here's, you know, what if you, that one looks plain white too. So when I'm cutting things out, I love to have it in a square that you can hold. It's really hard to cut a circle when you have all of this stuff in your way. So we just have these like little squares, hold them, and then you can cut them two at once. That way you only have to do this one time. Pinching in the middle and turning the paper, not letting them slide. Okay, we turn it over and then yes, they're just these white things. Then we're gonna do the little eyeballs. So, doop. So we just draw kind of like a, is that like a C shape? It's almost like you're trying to draw a circle there, but then it gets a little bit cut off. And then you can do even the same thing to this side. And then you can turn it over if that's easiest. However, however you want to do it, as long as they're about the same size. And then you take your permanent marker. And so you want to draw the lifeline of, I don't know if you can see that, the little shine there, that, that'll make them look really happy. So we get the eyes where we want it. So the shine, the window shine is coming from this way. So you you, you kind of do it a little round and then round this way. This, this curve is following this curve. See how they're about the same and then they just kind of touch. I don't know what that looks like. Squished, like a sloppy piece of pizza maybe. And then you fill this in black. There we go. Your little caterpillar eyes. My black's not wanting to work. And be careful not to, um, you know, get it on your desk. So it's probably a good idea to put it on something. My desk is ruined. It's made for art. So right now we should have just our glue stick. Everything ideally is dry. And then you want to start with the, the bottom of the caterpillar. And then I'm, I'm doing it in rainbow order. If you guys want to do it in mixed up order, you can. Like if you wanted an orange face, you could. Um, I think it looks prettiest in rainbow, but it's up to you guys. I'm kind of keeping them long ways like this versus squished out ways. Um, but I'm making his head squished out because I think that's cute. So, yeah, let's see. So you start at the bottom and then you layer up. So that one goes first. And then I think what I'm gonna do is kind of make him look like he's going like that instead of just straight across perfectly. So this is where we just get to play with it and say, what looks good? 
Maybe this one's up a little bit. Anyway, however you want it. The only thing I would suggest is that he's gonna need little antennas up here. And so if your whole thing is like really high, then you don't have room for antennas. So wherever you wanna put them. That looks kind of cute, maybe head tilt. <laughs> so funny looking. Um, yeah, and then we glue it down. So getting out our scrap paper again. Um, turn it over, hold it with your very fingertip and you wanna glue all the edges really, really well. Otherwise, these glue sticks just don't stick. I'm doing the eyeballs fairly high. Um, if you'll notice, there's glue on your paper there. If I were to put this down, then it would get on the eyeball. So I'm gonna do a fresh section of paper. Okay. It's my little dude. And we're gonna start gluing wise with the back one. So get the middle really well. And at the very last, get those edges. Now his back tail actually hangs off, so I'm not gonna worry about getting those edges. It'll just stick to your desk. For gluing, we do the tail first, little tail hanging out there, and we're just gluing to the blue sky is where we're gluing to. We're kind of making it look like he's sitting on this big leaf. So all the white should be glued really well. So my tongue's probably dry enough to cut out now. Go ahead and do that. Take your permanent marker and draw a little smile. Make it a little bit thicker down here so it doesn't get lost in that dark blue. And then just kind of decide where you want that tongue. I'm gonna put mine right there. There he is, and let's give him some antennas. Do you guys say antenna or antenna? I'm curious. It's been a debate with my friends. I need a different marker. I don't even know if I got it to be. Yes, this one works better. Okay, little guy some feelers up there. On my original one I drew feet, but I honestly just don't like the look of it. They just seem to be distracting. Okay, so to finish up our little envelope here, because if you hang it on the wall, this will just kind of fall down, then um, we just glue here and here. Boop. Boop. Looks like we need more in the corner doesn't really matter where. That way it just doesn't fall. All right. Look how cool this little guy looks. Yeah, I like it. Okay, guys. So here's our final product, our little caterpillar munching on our leaf. So I hope you had fun with this. And thanks for doing art with me. Have a good one.